While Leicester was any doubt, France will be a force at this year's World Cup. Any uh, rust or uh, fatigue from 2022, firmly gone. 53 points to 10. Penny for Steve Borthwick's thoughts. Uh, South Africa in 2008 beat England by 36 points. That was the record defeat at Twickenham. Blown out of the water today. And as Dave just mentioned, first time in a Six Nations campaign that England have uh, suffered two defeats at Twickenham. It is an annihilation. They come to Dublin next week. Uh, destroyed in some respects, uh, Galtier will be thrilled. Let's have a look at the table. This is where we are. Uh, everything's still in uh, Irish control for the time being. Scotland on 10 points will be looking to say something about that tomorrow. And should Ireland slip up, France with a healthy uh, points difference, although Ireland isn't too shabby as you can see, uh, France will be uh, there, thereabouts come Saturday. So I don't know, Matt, is the story here France or is the story here England? Oh, it's both. And this is a beautiful story. Bring back Eddie Jones. That's what I can hear the English press saying. Bring it. We, we were wrong. I mean, the English, the, the absolute, uh, how do I say, I think I have to say ignorance that I've been reading during the week about the singular selection of Marcus Smith, and I'm not criticising the young man in any way, but it was delusional. It was delusional to think the problems of that team were around Marcus. And Marcus is a fine player and tried very hard today. But we can all see there are huge systemic problems with this team. Eddie Jones was very hardly done by, in my opinion, and true to Paulingly. Borthwick is finding out, mate, this is not Leicester, this is not the Premiership, this is much bigger than that. And they were shockingly poor in every aspect. The, you know, the, the pace they played the game was at a snail's pace. And then we go to France. France was simply brilliant. Brilliant players, individual forms from so many players. Their cohesion, their thinking process, their tactics, their defence, their, their, their uh, ability to get reorganised, to identify space, to attack space. Where do we end? That was a masterclass, a brilliant, brilliant performance. Because, Andrew, I would put it to you, the story is England. That France are very, very good is not a huge surprise. It's no surprise that they've come back into form here as this championship has gone on. England are in tatters. They're yeah. a destroyed unit right now. <clears throat> Absolutely, and it's hard to... It's hard not to feel sorry um, for Borthwick and what he's doing and what he's trying to build. And how, like, He's an absolute workaholic. He's well thought of. He's had an unbelievable... Um, career so far with Leicester and now he's just he's, everything's just changed in two months for him and it's it's tough to imagine as you say Penny for his thoughts but um, I think I think Maddie's right not certainly not that Marcus Smith is the bad guy here no. but that that whole debate's irrelevant yes. because across the board France were better 1 to 15 1 to 23 especially I think there's elements of of your game where you'll get if you're more dominant it'll it'll exacerbate that and I think it's back row and if you look at um, cross um, Olivon and Aldrit, they were head and shoulders dominant, way more dominant than that, in that English back row. Jack Willis was anonymous. Um, anonymous. Don Brandt did, did nothing. Ludlum was quiet as well. And it, I think that kind of set the tone. I think he, up front as well, yeah, in the scrum front row. But England did manage to get a little bit of parity there at, at times, a couple of scrums, but the back row was just men against boys. Well, we were saying Curry, Underhill, Funapola feel a long way away now for any English rugby fan. I don't know where Borthwick starts there, Rob. It's, re it's, it's difficult for him. And, and Andrew's right. You do feel sorry for Borthwick because I don't think he, he, he necessarily has the quality of players. I don't think the Premiership is anywhere remotely near the level of what it used to be. I think he's, he's weak-ish in in the lock space, Atoje is not the force that he used to be. The back row got completely outplayed. I think they're weak at nine. They haven't settled on who their best number 10 is. Um, they, they, they look rock bottom. What's Owen Farrell saying there? He's searching hard. <laughs> yeah, He's but... really searching for something to say. That's yeah, yeah. such a tough place to be. Yeah. Just staring at each other. And, and he, that's not his first team talk today, feeling depressed. Half time, the game's gone. Yeah. It, towards the end of the half, that, that try at the end of the first half, the game's gone. And you're standing in the huddle saying, lads, 
like I've done this for Ulster plenty of times. You've probably never done it, <laughs> cards. <laughs> uh, but it's pretty depressing, and you just find yourself repeating the same thing three, four, five times, mm. and everybody's looking elsewhere, not wanting to make eye contact. Because there were a number of tries where under the post there was a degree of this stops now. Yeah. And it didn't stop. And you can no. do that a couple of times. A couple of times, like, let really stop, Snow. Yeah. <laughs> Not and really, then, it, this, it, this one's oh, it didn't stop, Owen. <laughs> so it's tough, really tough. After predicting Italy and England to win, <coughs> will you have a period of reflection now, or what's your stance? It's easy in that chair, isn't it? It sure it? is. <laughs> it sure is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> what, what did you suspect? And we've got to go to a break, and we will in just a second, and then we'll go through the game in more detail. Genuinely, what did you think England were going to produce today that they didn't? Uh, I just thought that at home in the big game, there, this was the biggest game probably of their season in, in in terms of where they are now. They are, their confidence is absolutely shattered going into the World Cup. So I thought that all their emotion, all their energy was going to go into this mm. into this week. Mm. Uh, you know, you throw in that France haven't necessarily been at their best over the last few weeks as well, uh, but. I was way off. <laughs> yeah. 